Welcome to another episode. I am V and this is the Sussex set. Welcome back guys. Yes, this is another episode and there are a lot of things to cover. So I'll probably break it up into parts. The summer has been super busy for me. Like you have no idea, but I am off this week. Yay. And I'm trying to play catch up. But that being said, I before I dive in, I definitely want to give a major shout out to everybody in the Sussex squad for their contributions and donations to the hashtag inspired by Megan, hashtag inspired by Harry CamFed scholarship fundraiser campaign. Bravo, bravo, bravo to Danny, bravo to Pre Peeper. And to everybody who's just promoting it and just trying to get the cause out there worldwide. And also thanks for the support on the video. I am constantly amazed by this group of people. So bravo to you guys. Girls education changes everything. That's one of the mantras that you find when you search through CanFed's website just to learn a little bit more about the cause of educating girls across Africa. It really does change everything. And that's one of the things that I have always respected Megan for and people who who speak so loudly about this particular issue. And that's because truly when a girl is educated, so much more is shared with her family, thereby her community, thereby her country, you know, and then ultimately thereby the world. So Continue to support. We're going all the way through Harry's birthday. Of course, don't stop donating after that. I would really recommend uh, selecting CanFed as one of the charities that you donate to on a regular basis. That's something that I've definitely started since I have been a Sussex watcher, hashtag Sussex squad. But this is one of those moments where you realize that even though you may not be able to give much or have a huge platform, this is one of those moments where you realize that your impact matters, no matter how small. And not just for CanFed, but for many other organizations and charities that you may have learned about throughout this whole process in the last couple of years. One of my favorites that I donate to on a regular basis is Waves for Change. I didn't know about the existence of that organization until I I saw a post from Harry and Megan, but I love what they do so much. So I hope that this is something that we can all look at and say, well, don't just stop there. You can carry on as as an individual and contribute to causes that matter to you, whether locally, whether it's something you've heard about through the Sussex squad, whether it's something you've always wanted to participate in. I really hope all of us carry on in that spirit. Use your voice, no matter how you use it, to shine a light on a cause that will impact someone other than yourself or outside of yourselves. So outside of ourselves. So well done to all of you guys. Thank you so much. And let's continue to roll on. We are at the time of this recording, we are about 10,000 away from a hundred thousand and Megan's birthday was like less than two weeks ago. So I hope you realize how remarkable that is for the vast majority of us to never have met each other, to have built a community nonetheless, and to regularly promote causes and charities, in this case, CanFed, and their impacts are going to go far and wide in perpetuity. Phenomenal, phenomenal all starting from organically, mind you, from individuals seeing how poorly Megan was treated, but yet being inspired by how she was able to carry on and still do good. And we saw how 
fiercely she was protecting that light. You know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That's not an accident. <laughs> That's not an accident that she included that on her Instagram or that it's probably one of her favorite songs. You know what? If it's it's a great song. Uh, it's a great message. Never, never let somebody dim your light in. But we as a community, we saw the way that entire industries and institutions were really trying to beat this woman into submission, trying to dim that very light, and she refused to let it happen. And so that inspired us all the way through. And it still does until organically, of course, with some people with some great ideas, free people, of course, with the Global Sussex Baby Shower and uh, the Father's Day fundraiser from the Sussex Squad podcast and the Sussex Great Forest and I honestly could go on and on, but I'm so inspired by this group of people that refuse to let the narrative be dictated by those who intend to do harm. We didn't let that happen, and we're still not letting it happen. And guess what? Girls are getting educated on the back end of it. So give yourselves a round of applause, honestly. You guys are incredible. So let's continue. So many things have happened since the last episode. I mean, things are really just starting to pick up and move fast. I thought summer was a slow time, but uh, <laughs> now I'm just being silly. But uh, Travelist had their summit. Uh, if you registered or you logged into the the virtual summit, definitely let us know how that went. I was at work during that time. So I wasn't able to actually participate. But I was very glad to see that that is something that he holds near and dear to his heart, and that he's continuing with in a major way. Uh, you may, or may or may not have known that uh, he's trying to let that be one of the organizations that brings people back into travel in a more responsible way, because that's what Travelist is all about, is trying to encourage a sense of accountability in tourist industries and among travelers, because the communities where tourism happens and where those industries may be based are not always impacted in the best way. And so with the, really the global community just coming to a halt during the quarantine, Travelist wants to be one of those organizations that allows travel to resume in a more responsible manner in the ways that it can and in the ways that Travelist can make that impact. So I was really happy to see that Travelist really has not stopped, <laughs> even though the pandemic has put a halt on a lot of things. Travelist is still carrying on about the business of responsible travel. So well done on that, Harry. And of course, you guys may have seen Harry's interview with Rashad Robinson, who is the president of Color of Change. That is a wonderful organization. And the conversation was insightful and important. It's something that it was great to see Harry engaging in. And of course, it doesn't stop there. But it's very encouraging to see him delving into an area where he you can tell he may not be the most comfortable because he knows there's a lot to learn we we all have to learn right but it's not something he shies away from he's invested in it directly right because he's now living in America he came to America at a time when in my lifetime I've never seen something as volatile as what we are sort of all living through with not just the Black Lives Matter, but that plus the pandemic and then seeing, you know, even racial disparities in that, <laughs> you know, but hovering over all of that is the experience that he went through as a direct observer to racism experienced by his wife directly. So it, it's so encouraging, but it's also something that causes me to respect him even more just because it's such an important to topic, but it's an important conversation for, pe for people who don't have to have the conversation to have, and then to have it in public in a way that not only are they holding themselves and in, in important institutions accountable, but they're encouraging those who would rather stay on the sidelines 
and just let those other folks handle it, whoever they are, but encouraging those people to jump in the game and actually let's all do this together. Let's all actually make this world that we're living in one that we would be proud to pass on to our children and grandchildren. Because right now it's just not that. But it was really great to see Rashad Robinson and Prince Harry talking about the importance of compassion and turning words into action, not just saying what would be nice and uh, what we should do, but actually doing it. Keep the words, just do it. But Color of Change is honestly such a wonderful organization. It is America's largest online racial justice organization, and it is driven by its almost 2 million members. Now, you may remember Harry and Meghan participating in the Stop Hate for Profit campaign, where they're still doing that right alongside Color of Change. And that campaign asked Facebook advertisers to pause ad spending and demand that racism across the platform be addressed. And to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of things that need to be addressed on Facebook, up and through Facebook, the organization, the business, the platform. Uh, So many issues, but uh, I like that they at least mentioned and I love that Harry and Meghan are using their voices to shine a light on the fact that something on these social media platforms has got to change, especially one with as much influence as Facebook. But one of the things that I plucked from this conversation that I absolutely love was Rashad Robinson's take on charity. And he said that charity is not bad, but when we use charity to substitute the work to actually change the rules, then we don't put ourselves in the situation to build toward justice. And That's so true. Like how many times do we see people doing charity and they're done? You know, they dust their hands off and they say, I did my good deed for the day. And they go on about their their day and their their business, which is not necessarily bad, but true work still has to be done in a lot of areas in a lot of ways. And of course, I'm not referring to Harry specifically because he's always been someone who has promoted his organizations and charities as a means to impact the lives of young people far beyond where he steps in or where uh, his collaborators step in with the charities. But it's really interesting to explore that conversation in relation to racial justice, in relation to social justice, because at the end of the day, This is going to be a growth process, not just for Harry, but for so many people who are jumping into this conversation, who have massive influence, who are jumping into a conversation and not just seeing what they can learn, but seeing how far they can take it in the right direction. And for Harry, it's a major growth process because he has lived in a bubble for his whole life. But even though he's been in that bubble, he's always pushed out of it. If you know, you know what I mean? Like nobody chooses to be born poor. Nobody chooses to be born rich. You are born who you are born. You don't get to choose your parents. The boy didn't choose to become a prince. (laughs) You know what I mean? Nobody chooses to be born royalty. So to an extent, he had no choice but to be in a bubble, but Even before this, this is not something that surprises me that he would engage in this conversation, this type of conversation, so authentically because it's not the type of topic that Harry has ever shied away from. But because he is who he is, he's never had to explore it as deeply as he is about to now. I don't even think... He's got, he's as deep as he's about to go. (laughs) You know what I mean? Especially if he's living in America. Uh, And he has removed himself from that bubble, which is so appreciated because you don't have to, like you just don't have to, you don't have to. And he did. And so to be using his voice, to be using his platforms as Um, he and Megan as something that promotes these types of ideas. It's truly incredible and it's very commendable. 
So those couple of things definitely needed to be spoken about early on. I didn't want to put it on the tail end because it deserves to be on front. But now we can get into some things, shall we? Now, leading up to the release of the book, Finding Freedom, there was a lot of talk. And now that the book is officially out, this is, I'm recording this on the 12th. I don't have my book yet. I actually did not buy the digital copy too. So you're welcome, Omid. I bought two copies of your book just because I'm impatient <laughs> and I'm already like halfway done. But I noticed that when the book was about to come out, I guess when the extracts were released, so many people, so many people had so many things to say, even just about those extracts. And I have been saying for literal months, from the time I knew this book was being written to now, which we all have, there are a lot of people who don't want the book released. Now, I'm not saying that it's disclosing anything that we didn't already know, maybe in more detail, but broader ideas of what was happening behind the scene. We already kind of knew, but it's a little different when everybody knows, right? Because we're like a specialized set of fans. We're a very small group of people, right? Compared to the world at large, who know who Harry and Meghan are, <laughs> you know what I mean? And who have some idea that they weren't treated so well or that things didn't go over so well with them being married and being in England and someone was always upset about something that Megan supposedly did half of the things that she was accused of were, were lies uh but even just in the lead up to let's just say the extracts the drum beat was getting so loud for just criticism of the book, but particularly by people who, let's say people who it is not in their best interest for a book like this to do well. Now, I know some people in the squad are not necessarily against the book, but they're not buying the book. They're not supporting the book. They may not be Omid Scobie fans, I guess would be the word, but, or they might have had a issue with one of the things that Carolyn or something that Carolyn Durand had said at some point, which I have heard that, I mean, definitely do your thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I wanted to buy the book because if anybody is going to write about Harry and Meghan, I want it to come from someone who I feel has been a neutral party and that would be Omid. Uh, and also, like I said in the previous episode, truthfully, the fact that she handpicked a few reporters to come to her last engagements, she being Megan, her last few engagements at Buckingham Palace, her very last engagement at Buckingham Palace. She chose she chose Omid. I don't know if she chose Kaylin. I think he mentioned that he she chose her as well as a few other people. That says a lot to me that she's always seen his reporting as at least fair, which is what she mentioned in the documentary. She didn't think... She, things would be easy, but that they would at least be fair. I feel like Omen is one of those people that have been fair to Harry and Megan. And so with that, I definitely want to give a quick congratulations to Omid for the success of the book. The book is doing very well. It is like in the top 10, solidly in the top 10 of Amazon, the world's number one bookseller at this, at this point. But uh, the book is doing well. You know what I mean? You know, they say there's not a whole lot of money in publishing. It's really, not, to me, I don't really care how much money a person makes as long as they're being truthful, as long as they're being just and fair. Uh, so congrats to him. So far, what I'm reading, I mean, it's pretty detailed, but I appreciate the fact that it is well-intentioned. And as he said himself, it humanizes Harry and Megan. Because over the last couple of years, they have essentially been dehumanized. And it seems like that was the goal from day one. Get her in here, get her married. You know, if that's the choice that Harry is making, let's get the ball rolling. Let's just get them started on the royal life and then boom, drop the hammer. And that's exactly what they did. So from that point on, it, it was nothing but just an onslaught of negativity aimed specifically at Megan. And the book 
this is the first book that has been released that actually humanizes Megan in the way that she deserves. And I mean, it kind of puts the world in their business. <laughs> you know, I stay in Harry and Megan business, I guess. <laughs> I guess we all do. Uh, but not in a way that's super intrusive in a way that we've seen in the tabloids. But it, it it's something that at this stage in their lives, when they've left England, when they've in part to receive the peace of mind that they, that anybody deserves. Uh, yeah, we knew Harry was wanting to, you know, have a normal life, get out of the whole royal bubble for a while. But it wasn't supposed to go like that. And it ended up going like that. So even though we're squarely in their business, <laughs> I feel like with this book, it is something that reminds people who may not be looking as closely at the situation as you and I. It reminds the public that at the end of the day, they're human beings. Yeah, they they at some point slept behind palace walls and, you know, they flew on jets to go all around the world to speak to people all around the world. And, you know, they wear high priced clothes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That doesn't make a person non-human any more than someone who's at the very opposite of the economic spectrum, you know? And somehow that got that got lost. What I appreciate about the book is it's being brought back to center. So congrats to Omid, congrats to Carolyn. Thanks for um, at least undertaking something like that, that again, it ain't breaking news to me. It's not, not like literally nothing that has been released. And this is not to poo poo anything, but it's because we all have been looking so closely for the last couple of years. If anything, it just confirms what we already know. But again, the most important thing is that other people can actually see the shenanigans that have gone on. And so in this episode, I'm not going to take such a deep dive because, again, I'm not even done with the book. But I do want to hit on a couple of things around the actual release of the book that have caught my eye. Now, have you noticed some of the most vocal critics of the book seem to be people squarely on the right wing and of course, some of the same people that have been vocal and, you know, critical of Harry and Meghan, really from day one, they're just sticking to their brand at this point. But we're talking about specifically people, you can call them old heads, who are mad that their books didn't sell as well. You know, it's a lot of people tried to write books about Harry and Meghan didn't do that well. Uh, shout out to Sussex Squad for <laughs> making sure people knew what, you know, what those types of books were rooted in. But uh, their books didn't do as well. And then they're also afraid of what I feel, what Old Mid actually represents for them, which is sort of, or it could be like a changing of the guard with regard to... Uh, that particular position and that field, I guess, of royal reporting. Um, again, the book is number eight on Amazon. I believe it's number one in the UK. I really don't look that closely, but you guys can tell me whether or not any other royal books have done those uh, numbers or at least um, up to that particular point <laughs> rank in the list. But I think the fact that, that Omid is someone who refuses to play the game that the royal report reporters have been playing up to this point, particularly as it relates to Harry and Meghan. He refuses to play those games and he succeeds by refusing to play those games. So then when it's his turn to write a book, it does extremely well. Oh, the girls are hot. They're really like they are so deep in their feelings that it's almost embarrassing at this point. Um, not to mention that really for the last two weeks, every time they turn on the television, they see Omid. I'm not even in the UK and I feel like I, I feel like I see him all the time at this point promoting the book. So imagine what 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 people in the UK are seeing. At least if you're if you're looking for that type of thing, uh, yeah, 
there has to be some jealousy there. I mean, I don't have anything to substantiate that. I don't, but I do have common sense, girl. And again, nobody else has, has had that type of success that I have seen in the last couple of years. And then also what the book does, at least based on what I've heard about the the extracts of the book, which I haven't gotten to those particular extracts yet. What the book does is it actually highlights, again, for the public, that a lot of the rumors that have been started about Megan, that have been started in the tabloids, uh, a lot of those rumors, if not all of them, have been unfounded. Okay, or if there was a certain situation or something similar that happened that that made it to the papers, it was completely muddied up. And and by the time it reached the papers, so different from what actually happened. So a morning text at 5 a.m. becomes Megan is a demanding boss type bossy individual who's you know, now being referred to as Hurricane Megan. You know what I mean? And that's just one topic. So the book definitely shines a light on the sinister nature of the tabloids. But then as I'm assuming, as it goes through the tenure of the Sussexes in the royal family of senior royals and in England, it shows straight up that the family was briefing against Harry and Meghan, that the family didn't protect Harry and Meghan. Again, completely unrelated to the book, Meghan said herself she didn't feel protected by the institution. In fact, she felt silenced. And so this is in her court documents. That's public. And so that's another thing that the criticism of this book is rooted in. Not saying it doesn't deserve criticism. I mean, everything deserves criticism. When you put it out there for the public, it's gonna get criticized. But a lot of this criticism is really just based on people feeling exposed and not just the tabloids, but understand that a lot of these people that work for these tabloids, they're mouthpieces for the people we never hear from. Those in the British royal family. So see if you recognize some of these names. Pierce Morgan, he's in the book, but we knew he was a critic. He was he's going to criticize any and everything because his feelings got hurt because Megan decided that she didn't want to meet up with him again. Like, sis, move on with your life. Uh, and so from there, once she officially became a royal, he was bitter about it. And he used his show as a bully pulpit. And he, like a lot of other people, decided that she was trapped and she had nowhere else to go. And so all she had to do was take it. And... Nobody counted on them leaving. Of course, he's a critic of the book. There's Richard Palmer, another right-wing talking head type reporter. There's Dickie Arbiter and his spawn, Victoria. Uh, Dickie was a mouthpiece for the queen back in the day. And I guess a lot of people somehow thought that Victoria Arbiter was neutral I mean she's not as bad as some people but she seems to be going on shows from the clips that I've seen and saying that Harry and Meghan she's basically perpetuating this lie that Harry and Meghan authorized the biography just because the authors talk to people who are their friends does not necessarily mean that Harry and Meghan authorized it and went through and edited and and said make sure you include the It's unauthorized, you know, but she seems to be putting forth this idea that Harry and Meghan have something to do with it. Um, Like literally every interview she's done, she said this. Things like, oh, well, you know, things are just a little bit too detailed. How do you get this information if you're not being told this specifically? Who's telling this to you when only so-and-so was there at whatever you're referring to? You know what I mean? And this is what Meghan was talking about, death by a thousand cuts. You know, someone who just not just her, but think of a whole group of people and whole, a whole industry where every chance they get, they tell a little lie. But if they're doing it every chance they get and then 10 other people are doing the same thing, 
then it creates a narrative. And then after a while, it becomes very difficult to control that narrative. And then after a while, it becomes Megan is the downfall of the royal family. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just how things get out of hand that easy. There is, what's that man's name? Author Edwards, the photographer who likes his porn. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can't say the real word because YouTube is going to punish me, but P-O-R-N-T. Uh, yeah, he likes that apparently. Uh, but no, no, that's neither here nor there. I guess that's his business, but pfft. Well, it's public. Uh, listen, this man is going on a, seems like a, uh, a tour of scorn. He has been in his feelings ever since Harry got married. You know, he talks about how, you know, I've taken a picture of him since he was a baby and boy, Harry and your grandson, that man got a life, you know, but he, he's said some things, really nasty things about Megan. Uh, he, he's a critic of the book and you know who else is? Dan Wooten, that's something we're not surprised by. I would be more surprised if he had nothing to say about the book. Oh, and by the way, did you hear? We're nasty now. Sussex Squad is nasty. Nasty. Nasty girls. Don't mean a thing. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, you nasty girl. Hey, guess what? We're in good company because... According to what I saw yesterday, Donald Trump called Kamala Harris nasty. He called Megan nasty. He called Hillary nasty. He calls any woman that has a voice that is not afraid to use it, as Megan has said, they're nasty. So shout out to Sussex Squad, you nasty girls. Uh, I'm honestly flattered, Dan. Thank you. I, I didn't realize that you had thought so highly of us. Um, but I guess, you know, this year is full of surprises. So, but seriously, I will say this and I only say this. So you don't actually engage with, with people like them, especially Dan, uh, but really any of these reporters, y'all, I saw the tweet and there was a video, he wasn't tagged in it. So that, you know, that's fine. But where he was calling Sussex Squad nasty, he was speaking to someone, they were talking about the book, and, you know, now he's on this whole thing that, oh, Harry, he needs to apologize for dressing up, you know, in Halloween that one time, and, you know, it just wasn't right, you know, oh, he, he, he what does he get off talking about social justice when he hasn't apologized? Girl girl ain't nobody thinking about that don't you know that in 2020 people are so vocal about any and everything if somebody was ready to throw harry you know off the side of the boat for that then they would have done so already don't nobody care about that but what you need is the views what you need is the clicks and so of course you're gonna name drop sussex squad because now that the sussexes aren't actually there and you don't actually have any content of course you want to get the people who are very active on twitter to somehow get your stuff somehow you know popping on Twitter so other non-royals can happen upon it and maybe go to an article and click on it or you know what I mean so what I'm saying to you Sussex Squad is this peep game do not fall for it so yeah fine go ahead and call us nasty girl nobody cares about your opinion but what I'm saying to you is don't fall for the okie doke because we have seen reporters for the last couple of years talking about and, and, and not realizing that their, their tweets <laughs> were being screenshotted, I guess saying, Oh, well, you know, they're engaging and all we care about is the clicks. And somebody recently said, well, I have a mortgage to pay and I got kids to feed just on some bull crap that they were sharing. You know what I mean? When someone from the squad had called them, Oh, this isn't like an actual Royal reporter, a verified blue check, you know? So don't fall for the okie doke. This man is trying to get us, engaging in his tweets, engaging in his links and his stories. He could say Megan was about to grow a third boob. Don't click, don't engage because he wants that engagement. He needs that engagement. And what you should do is just starve him out and let him write about Will and Kate and Charles and Camilla and Philip and the Queen.
Let him do that and see how much engagement he gets. He loves him so much. He says they're what's good for England. Well, go ahead and write about your people, Dan. Stop name dropping us. We know we are that girl. We know this. But you ought to be done with us. Harry and Meghan are paying property taxes in America, girl. So just write about the people you say are 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 doing it well. They're not putting a foot wrong, I believe Richard Kay says all the time about uh, Khadija Monet. And so those are your people. I'm sure they're happy to have the attention back. So give it to them. Give it to them. Give it to them, girl. Stop dropping our names. You have no reason to at this point. And Kim, you made a good point on Twitter, which is that Sussex Squad content gets more engagement. Just Sussex Squad content. Not not our tweets, our content. Like people are writing about us at this point. You know? Because we we are a part of the narrative. Not that we necessarily made ourselves a part of the narrative, but in a way we kind of had to. Because again, imagine if there was no one to debunk a lot of the the lies that were told about Harry and Meghan. But our content gets more engagement than like Cambridge content, for example. And that's not to shade the Cambridges, but it's not our fault that people aren't actually interested in them. And so you know what that means, or at least what it could mean. Since the fluff that they write about regarding the Cambridges. And that's just an example, since that doesn't get the clicks that people like Dan Wooten at the Sun and all these other clowns at the Mirror and those idiots at the Telegraph and the fools at the Fail. Well, then maybe they need to take a pivot toward the nasty and salacious tabloid type content about the Cambridges that they so happily wrote about Harry and Meghan. Not that I want that because I'm not invested in it one way or the other. I do not care. Have I mentioned that before on this podcast? I don't care. But don't drop our name. Don't drop Harry Megan's name just because you know those names have legs. Now, taking that pivot won't be such an easy thing to do because your spare is not there. Right? The heir is supposed to be Big Daddy King Dingling, while the spare is the one who takes all the blows as if he were a punching bag. And that's not to say that they haven't historically been critical of Will and his work ethic or Kate and her work ethic. But I mean, like they literally protected them when Harry and Meghan were there. And now the Harry and Meghan are now doing their own thing. Well, you know, you can make a choice. You can just hang it up or you can do what you do best. And keep that same energy when it comes to the royals who are actually sucking up your tax dollars as if they were newborn babies looking for a tate. And keep that same energy when it comes to the royals who are actually sucking up your tax dollars as if they were newborn babies looking for a tate. <laughs> I mean, sucking them right up. How about the fact that, I mean, we got helicopter rides. We got million dollar driveways. We got like hedges just to keep the public from peering in. But y'all ask for Harry and Meghan to pay back renovations for Frogmore Cottage. And it's a structure they don't even own, you know? So mm, I'm trying to really not... (laughs) Use profanity because I really want to tell y'all to go straight to hell. Uh, But you can keep Salsa Squad out of your mouth because we live in America now. You know, Santa Barbara to be exact. We, we, you know, we, 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 we minded our business over here. Okay. So speaking of Santa Barbara, (laughs) congrats to Harry and Meghan for purchasing their first home both together and their first, first home, uh, ever that's amazing that's that's incredible uh and they have some neighbors whose names we all know including Ellen DeGeneres and others but I I really truthfully (laughs) honestly just hope that their privacy is respected as anyone else's will you know in the in the area you have a lot of just super rich people super famous people uh that live there and so 
you don't hear stories about them. So we wouldn't expect to hear anything about any about Harry or Meghan. And we know that as soon as as soon as somebody tries to shop some pictures of any one of them on their on their private property, again, where they pay taxes, whether they pay taxes or not, you know, it doesn't matter. You're getting sued and you will lose. Uh, but I, I just hope people, you know, just give them peace of mind and, and that like just regular people don't like just see them and take pictures and things like that. And um, they don't get pestered just because, you know, nobody, nobody wants to live like that. Nobody should live like that. And uh, frankly, they've been through enough. But I love the fact that nobody knew they they moved <laughs> for like a solid month, more than a month after they moved from Tyler Perry's property. We love it. We love to see it. And, you know, that's not a move they probably could have pulled off over in England. Um, that's how it should be. And to be honest, I would be fine never knowing where they move, when they moved, as long as I knew that they were safe and, and uh, happy. So congrats to them, though. And I, I'm i just so happy that Archie will get to grow up in a world, like Harry said, that where he can determine his own destiny uh, without it being predetermined for him. You see how they try to determine Harry's destiny and he's not even he's not even the direct heir. No titles. You know, they said that from day one. And I remember, it just shows you how how absurd all of this has been. I remember when Archie was born, people were like, well, he's not going to be king, and so he doesn't need a title. And then when he was born, they didn't give him a title. And then they got upset about that, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I love it. Again, what, the best thing about all of this is that, no offense, Harry, because we love you. Uh, we love you over here. But I'm so glad that Archie is not going to have, <laughs> I'm so glad that Archie is not going to have a British accent. My God, it is probably the ultimate silver lining. Like truly, I don't know what accent he's going to have. <laughs> I mean, he's not even two, but I, 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 I honestly hope that he doesn't, um, and you know, I think it'll be the ultimate example for how his parents have made sure that he wasn't constrained and confined by the same two, at least two institutions, the Royal family and the tabloids, uh, confined and constrained by those institutions and made to shrink himself over the course of his childhood and life and, or for him to be directly pit against his own cousins. You know what I mean? Uh, in the words of Ian Levan Sant, not on my watch. <laughs> Seriously, though, uh, big up to Harry for protecting his family, making sure that Megan didn't have to put up with it. I read somewhere that said that Megan was really, and this might have been about the book, Megan was really trying to stick it out and to make it work. And to make a way and which women often do. And Harry said, nah, cause we good on any MLK Boulevard. We good. We good, girl. We finna go to LA. We finna go to the West coast. We finna go to America. We finna go somewhere that is not here. And I feel like Harry decided that you're not putting up with this anymore. Cause I'm damn sure not going to put up with it. Uh, and it's time to go. So that sort of the fact that it, you know, let's, if this is true, this is assuming this is true, that if she was really willing to stick it out out of love for her husband, whew, my God, what a sad thing that would have been, you know, I mean, the love for your husband, the love for your, you know, your family and marriage, that's, that's incredible. But, Essentially, that would have meant that she would have had to, again, shrink herself. Not that she would have done that, but I think over time, there there would have been a consequence to that woman's soul. I don't care 
how you slice it over five, 10 years, that would have been a consequence. There would have been some kind of impact on that. Obviously, there was an obviously an, uh, an impact on her psyche and on her emotions. It's a miracle that that child got here healthy, you know, but the fact that she was real, really willing to risk that, I mean, wow, that's incredible. But I'm glad that she didn't have to because God knows, God knows she was winning then, she's winning now. Uh, but a light like that should never be dimmed, ever. That would be a crime. No one's light should be. But for someone who has so much to offer, so much to say, and so many things to do in this world in her life, that's unacceptable uh, the way they treated her. And I'm glad that Harry decided the same thing. And that trip over Thanksgiving where they were deciding which direction their life would take, they planned it and they got the hell up out of there. And I'm glad. Speaking of Megan, y'all, um, how does she just, I mean, she just keeps winning. She's going to be, in case you don't know, which probably like 0% of people listening to this don't know, make sure you tune in on Friday for the 19th News interview where Megan will be conducting an interview with the founder, one of the co-founders of the 19th News, which seeks to bring fairness in reporting as it relates to women and women of color. And uh, also, I believe Kamala Harris is speaking on that day. God, how does she just keep winning? Oh, right, because she's a winner. So what I love is that Megan, she has such gusto what do they call it gumption she said you know what this will be a good idea let me see if I can do an interview and this is this is a different way than most of us have seen her we've seen her be interviewed I think this is the first time I'm ever going to see Megan interviewing anybody anybody uh but I love that and of course who who's gonna say no because here's the thing it's not like This is not something that she hasn't become an expert in (laughs) over the past couple of years. Uh, But also she's been very, even before she became a royal, she's been very active in uh, media, uh, online media, and putting out content that is both encouraging and inspiring to women. We know Megan is a staunch feminist, Megan and Harry, but... I think this is going to be something so impactful for people who are registered and are taken interest in it. And I'm more interested in the questions that she's asking in context of what she's been through. So that that will be wonderful. And, you know, this was announced before we even knew Kamala Harris would be picked as the vice presidential nominee for Joe Biden, you know, so. Sis really just stays in the company of bad bees because she's one herself. And I just, can I just remind y'all that we're in the middle of a pandemic. She hasn't fully flexed yet. (laughs) Neither has Harry. They haven't even rolled out Archwell. Like, (laughs) so I'm I'm just tickled pink at how how much they are about to win. Like they're winning, but they're really about to eat y'all. Like, I hope y'all realize. But also I'm tickled at the fact that the world is seeing it and the world is waiting. They're like, people are just waiting to support what she does. There's nothing about Megan that makes someone like with common sense. You know, because everybody ain't got them. Common sense ain't common in some places. But there's nothing about Megan that rubs thinking people the wrong way. Nobody's perfect, but she's kind of close. You know what I mean? And even if she wasn't, all the good sis does is mind her own business and speak up for women. Speak up for women and girls. That's it. That's it. And somehow, somewhere, somebody had a problem with that. But guess who's losing out now? Guess who's losing out now? And then they wonder why even more people are seeing those institutions that she came, now she escaped from as irrelevant. Wow, way to shoot yourselves in the foot. 
Way to shoot yourselves in the foot. You know, and people are still calling for Harry to come back to England. Oh, Harry's welcome back. But girl, Harry's not welcome back without his wife <laughs> or his child. Like how, I mean, I've already, I've already talked about this before. I'm not even going to go down that road. But um, I laugh in the face of a one-year review. I can't wait. You know, January is right around the corner. I mean, honestly, I'm doubtful that it's even going to happen. But, I mean, they're property owners. Child, for the first time in his life, Harry Wales has bills. And y'all finna cut these lights off, you feel? (laughs) But, like, think about it. The boy has been... And like I said, he's been in a bubble for the better part of four decades. The boy went from having a maid to having a mortgage. And the courage that that takes, well, when again, you don't have to. Oh, royal family, girl, you messed up. You messed up. You really had, you really had not one, but you had two golden geese. And what did you do? What did you do? You tried to roast them like Megan roasted that chicken the night that Harry proposed to her. Yeah, that made, but that's what they tried to do. Um, and then you ended up burning yourself. So, oh, well, stream Elephant and Black is King on Disney Plus for clear skin. And soak up some of this melanin because they damn sure ain't got no more in the royal family. And with that, that is pretty much all I have for today. Do not forget, please, that we are doing this fundraiser for CamFed to educate girls in Africa. We're running it all the way up through his birthday, which is September 15th. And let's see how much we can get. Again, we're almost at 100K. That's incredible, y'all. And of course, make sure you register for the 19th News Summit that they have. Well, this is actually going on this week, but Megan's Day is going to be on the 14th, August the 14th. So please register for that. If there are still spots available, of course, if you miss it or you can't register, you, there's no more spots available. Just look out for the clips and the videos. I'm sure they're going to be circulating somewhere on YouTube. And of course, girl, news media is going to be eating it up because Megan, they they love Megan's name for the same reason Dan Wooten love Megan's name, girl. So um, you'll see it, but just make sure you, you take part in uh, the conversation. Thank you as always for your support, guys. It is deeply appreciated. And for this episode, I'm definitely turning off the Super Chats because any donations you would give on the video, I would much rather those go to CamFed. If you would like to support the channel, you can do so at another time on Patreon uh, at Sussex Set, where you can get into the mess, girl, because uh, <laughs> I'm starting a series over there that um, it's, it's, it's going to be fun. If you also just want to keep up with how the fundraiser has gone, or maybe this news is just completely brand new to you, uh, there's, I think, the most recent public post that I made over on Patreon. It just kind of highlights each day as the numbers go up with CanFed tweets and how we are doing as a group with regard to the fundraiser and trying to get as many girls educated as we possibly can. So uh, you can find me at Patreon. That's the best way to show support. But uh, for now, let's just focus all of our energies toward CanFed. And by the way, shout out to the person that tweeted, hey, if everybody just donates $36 to CanFed, that would put us, <laughs> if this many people donated $36, that would put us at 100 k So everybody's just kind of been donating $36. So uh, that can. So if you can, again, just share a tweet, tell somebody else about it who wants to donate. It's, it's, it's really the effort of everybody is what uh, something like this requires. And so I thank you guys for that. Uh, find me on Twitter at Sussex Squad. You can find me on Instagram at Sussex Set. I will be making another episode. I'm going to try really, 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 really hard to record two more episodes before. So today is Wednesday. Let's say before Sunday. Okay. And just kind of have those ready for me to drop at some point next week. So 
I don't have anything else to add for this episode, but I will be coming back with my honest view of the book once I have that read. And I hope otherwise, I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. It is very important that we do that. We never forget to do that. And you're taking care of each other and that you are keep, you know, you're just shining your light the way Miss Doria taught Lil Megan to do and Diana taught Lil Harry to do. And I'm sure our mamas taught us to do. So uh, keep on that, keep on that vein. Uh, And I think that'll carry us well out of 2020. And so with that, until next time, ladies and gents, peace. I'm a bad bitch. You can't kill me. Kill me.